What's cracking my photography friends? I am here in Tokyo, perhaps one of the best cities in the world to try out some of these slower shutter, long exposure techniques. But next time you go out at night, anywhere in the world, you can give them a go for yourself. It's always fun to mix up your photography. So some of them are on a tripod, some of them are handheld. I'm gonna go out and try all of these techniques here in Tokyo. So let's jump in. So the first one is the panning shot. Now this is one of my favorites. It's really fun to do, especially here in Tokyo. Now this one, basically you're following a moving object with a slightly slower shutter speed. If you can match that speed, you'll end up with motion blur in the background while your subject will be nice and sharp. So it can be quite tricky to master, but it is lots of fun, so keep practicing it. These are my tips for the panning shot. To get started with your panning shot, I suggest either using full manual mode or even shutter priority mode works great as well. But the most important setting here is your shutter speed. To practice, I suggest starting with one over 20 and then slightly reducing from here once you get the hang of it. If you are practicing with cars, perhaps start at a spot just after a set of traffic lights so the cars aren't moving too quickly while you get started. It's important to lock your subject to the same part of your frame as your panning panning, so either using a single select autofocus point or even an intersection point on your thirds grid, but try to pick a part of the car or subject and keep it in that exact same spot as you track the moving object. Also try to think about a nice sturdy base of support and just turn your body with the moving object. Also make sure to have your camera set to allow for continuous high speed shooting so you can take multiple shots as the subject moves through your frame. Remember the key here is practice and sometimes even if you don't totally nail it, it can still make for a pretty interesting shot. Also think of the background, having lights like this where the motion blur is quite obvious can help make the effect more interesting. So the next one is another handheld one and it is just slowing your shutter speed down enough to be able to get some motion blur while keeping your body nice and still. So I like this one. Sometimes you don't always have a tripod on you or you can't always use a tripod in every location. So this is a really good one to still get that little bit of motion blur in your shots. Obviously your shutter speed can't be too slow because you won't be able to hold it steady but things like ibis or image stabilization in your lens can really help with this don't worry if you don't have ibis built in you can still give it a go you probably just can't slow your shutter speed down as much again with this one it is super important to have a sturdy base of support so plant your feet shoulder width apart lock your elbows in and keep your camera as steady as possible another tip here is to actually use any objects around you sometimes you can lean on a pole for example or even push your camera up against the pole to keep yourself nice and stable while you're shooting determining your shutter speed here you will need to practice a bit and it will ultimately depend on your camera and lens setup and whether they both have some kind of stabilization which obviously helps quite a bit when you're shooting handheld like this again remember how fast the movement is occurring in your frame as well with my camera and lens setup i can often get away with one over four and this can often work well for this type of shot also remember the wider your lens the less chance you'll be able to see any camera shake so start with a wider lens if possible so the next one again is still shooting these shorter slower shutter speeds so not real long where you're getting light trails and different things but using a tripod for this technique you're not going to slow your shutter too much because you still want to be able to make out what the subject is of course this one is essentially the same technique as our last one but now having a tripod gives you a little more freedom to play around with your shutter speed and not have to worry about camera shake. As mentioned, these more in-between slow shutter speeds without doing a really long exposure are often more pleasing to me. If you can still make out what the subject is, but it has the right amount of motion blur, to me, it actually really helps show this story of movement. Again, shutter speed will be determined by how quickly the movement is occurring, but you want it long enough that it only moves a little bit through your frame. Again, one over four can often and work well for this and then hold your shutter down as the object moves through the desired area of your frame. 
So next up, we just have your standard long exposure. So for me, this could be anywhere from two, three seconds, five seconds or longer, up to 30 seconds or even longer. This is definitely where you're starting to get more your light trails. So the advantage of this one, especially when you're using a tripod, you can shoot multiple different exposures and stack them on top of each other if you're not getting clear light trails. For me, I don't shoot a lot of light trails I used to back in the day, but it is still a fun one to play around with, especially in a city like Tokyo. For shooting your longer exposures to get light trails, again, consider how quick the movement is occurring in your frame and also consider the actual lights on the objects as this is what's going to give you your trails. A tip here if your light trails are looking a little thin is to actually stack your images in Photoshop. So always remember to take multiple shots before moving your tripod. Having the exact same frame when shooting on a tripod actually makes it super easy to stack images like this. Try to pick a spot with lots of movement occurring but always remember to consider your wider frame as well. You can really play around with your shutter speed here, so don't be afraid to try different ones, 5 seconds, 10, 15, 30 seconds, or even longer using the bulb setting. Here, using a 2 second timer can be really handy if you want to make sure your tripod is nice and steady when the exposure starts. Okay, lucky last is the zoom effect. Now you do need a zoom lens for this one and essentially it's where you're zooming in or out during the long exposure. So this is a bit more of a creative one. Personally, I don't use it too often, but it can be an interesting one to play around with as well. Personally, I found somewhere between four to 10 seconds ideal for this. For me, the trick here is to only zoom briefly, but then keep the rest of the exposure more like a regular long exposure. This means the effect won't be as intense and you can still make out what most of the scene is. The best way to do this is to zoom in at the very start of your exposure so you're not having to guess when it will end. So have your hand ready to zoom as the exposure begins using a two second timer again can be useful. Then quickly zoom in or out ending where you want your frame to be. This will create just enough of this zoom effect without overdoing it. So I hope you did enjoy this one. Get out there and try some of these techniques for yourself. Always fun to mix up your photography and try new things. Thanks so much for watching. Keep on creating, keep on growing my friends. Catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Right on cue, train.